one guard there beating the crap out of everybody, thinks he's got a big dick, some <laughs> fucking bullshit like that. Welcome everyone to Big Movies with Big Mike and Big Nick. I am the host of this show, Johnny, not in the title. And today we are joined as our two guests as always, we have Big Mike and Big Nick. So the reason we're doing this series is because you guys have been asking for it. We do our Classic or Not Movie Edition on TikTok, and there's some movies that we asked Nick about and he just hasn't seen. So we want to film in, see what he thinks of these movies, and see if he, now that he's seen them, can rule them a classic. So our first episode today is probably our most controversial one, the one that has been talked about a lot, and that's Shawshank Redemption. Shai Shing! Shai Shing! <laughs> so over the weekend we had the opportunity to watch the movie. We each took a ch the chance to watch a two and a half hour movie. It on felt the like four and a half, I'm not gonna lie. It's, yeah. a, long, it's a long flip. It's a long movie. It's but long we all watched it over the weekend and now we can talk about it. So Nick, initial reaction, what did you think of Shawshank Redemption? Right. So, you know me, I gotta like lead myself into of course, this, okay? Of course. I can't just give you my straight answer here. Yeah. So for the record, mm -hmm. not on the record, for the record, I did watch this movie. I watched it with my girlfriend Saturday night. I told her I had to watch this movie. Johnny said I had to watch a movie. She goes, what well, do you got to watch this movie for? I go, there's some segment we're doing at work. So we got to watch the fucking movie. <laughs> watch the movie. I did watch the trailer first because I wanted to get a little understanding of what was going on beforehand. See, I, I like it. I, I, I got to do my homework before I watch a movie. My honest opinion, average at best. Average at average best. Average at best. I'm going to tell you what. Number one, movie was so fucking long. It could be... Fucking six and a half hours. Oh, like and, oh. and there's not too much action in the movie either. I don't like that though. I don't. I, I'm an action guy. You're an action guy. Yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. I like. I like action. You gotta. You're a go go go. Yeah, I gotta. Yeah. I gotta keep going. Like the, the moral of the story was good. That I will give you. The mm -hmm. whole thing about trying to get out, blah, 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 trying to help the prison guards, so on and so forth. The last, like, ten minutes was good. Like, when Morgan yeah. Freeman got his approval. Spoiler. Yeah, sorry. Shit. This is not going to fuck No, 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 no. no. <laughs> doing, we're doing a movie review. They're going to be spoilers. So, if yeah. you haven't seen Shawshank Redemption, watch it. Spoiler take alert. Two and a half hours and come back. And, and, uh, <laughs> spoiler alerts. When he gets approved. And then he goes, he goes in the halfway house. He's thinking about robbing a bank in because, you know, obviously when you've been in prison for that long, that's what's normal to you. Mm -hmm. Finds the tree with the rock, with the stuff, and then finds him at the end. Oh, it was so great. That I will give you, that yeah. was good. But the rest of it was just like, you know, him in the cell, one guard there beating the crap out of everybody, thinks he's got a big dick, some <laughs> fucking bullshit like that. It was just slow. It's not that the movie sucked. It was just, it's just too slow for me. It's just a lot of... You're an action guy. I don't like the action. I mean, Mike, you've seen the movie before, so what did you think about yeah. the, you know, Did you notice anything new on the rewatch, or like, what are your general thoughts? Um, I hadn't seen it in a really long time, so it was definitely a good rewatch. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally love the movie. I mean, how can you not love listening to Morgan Freeman's voice, too? Andy Dufresne. It's mesmerizing. Absolute legend, Morgan Freeman. Oh my god, it's unbelievable. What was the scene that stood out most to you? The scene that stands out the most, slash, I mean, it's it's terrible, terrible, the... The old guy who gets out after Brooks, a while, Brooks, yeah, sad. and he yeah. hangs himself. So that, sad. So I think sad. that scene, in a, uh, in a way, kind of encapsulates a lot of the the, the hope part of what Morgan Freeman's anti hope. Yeah. You know, the fact that even if you do get out, what's left for you on the outside? Yeah. Um, and I think the character of Brooks kind of represents a way that you know not only has society failed them, but the prison industrial system fails these people. Yep. And when you leave prison, you leave prison, then what? Like, all you know, if you're in prison for life or 50 years, all you know is prison. Yeah. Right? Well, then they say, it's like, first you hate the walls, mm -hmm. but then you start to love the walls because that's all you see is walls. It's like Morgan Freeman, when he was at the uh, at the grocery store, can I go to the bathroom? Yeah. And the guy's like, you don't have to ask me, just go. Mm -hmm. And he's like, for 40 years, I was asked to t I had to ask to take a piss. It's like, psychologically, it just, it does something to you. Yeah. Mean, I think Morgan Freeman would have done one or two things if he didn't know Andy. Robbed a bit, something or shot somebody else to go back to prison or two hung himself, just yeah. like Brooke did. But that's where Andy comes into play about this representation of hope. Without Andy Dufresne, that's exactly right, that Morgan Freeman would have ended up like Brooks. It's so much so that he was even in the same room as Brooks. And, you know, he writes, Brooks was here, and, then, and so was... So was Red. So was Red. Yeah. And so, in, in turn, uh, the idea of Andy Dufresne being this hope, you know, for Morgan Freeman, the the crux of the movie, a lot of it was that Andy Dufresne, or Red kept telling Andy Dufresne that there is no hope, yep, that right. hope is made up, right. and then they both get out, and then this hope arrives right. again. And then he starts to realize, wow, like I got approved, and then it's like I'm out, and then it's like I'm gonna go see where Andy wanted me to go, because mm -hmm. Andy's like, if you ever get out of here, go to this tree. If you ever get out, go yeah. there. I don't care what it takes. You got to get there. Blah blah blah. Yep. And Andy to Dufresne's path to get there is just like wild, like being in solitary for X amount of days, like. Knowing it's gonna happen when he reads that message over the loudspeaker and like all that little stuff, it's like he knows the he knows all the consequences. 
and he knows what's going to happen and whatnot, but he still does it because he knows, like, in the long, he knows his long game, like, yeah. what's he, what he wants to do and whatnot. From the moment he walked into that prison, he had to go. It didn't matter how long it was going to take, he was, yeah. he, he was digging himself out of there. Yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but, like, the, the almost Christ-like part of Andy Dufresne, about how he always self uh, gives himself up for the great yeah. game, you know, in terms of writing the letter for six, seven years. You know, he's always a sacrificial lamb yeah. when it comes to getting the beer, which is a very obvious metaphor for Jesus giving bread, um, you know, and not taking it in himself. Yeah. And then you have, you know, him sacrificing himself, you know, with the music for the greater good, yeah. which leaves him in solitary for two months or for a month. Right. So I, I think there's a, the movie is very layered. It's a very deep and intricate movie. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but you also earned a shit ton of respect from the people inside yeah. the yard. If you're going to be in prison for that long, you better make a lot of friends. Yeah. My favorite part of that movie, I will say, is when he fools uh, the warden. Mm -hmm. And the warden opens yeah. up the newspaper and he's like, yeah. murder at Shawshank. Uh, and then all of a sudden you hear the ambulance, I mean, not the ambulance, the cops coming down, yeah. giving him a warning. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. The whole thing with Morgan Freeman, mm -hmm. like, again, I don't know if this shit happens or not in real life. I'm not going to sit here and say it does or doesn't, but, like, it was just ironic how he's like, He's sitting there in his, like, the approval to, like, let him go. And he's like, I don't really give a shit. Stop wasting my time. Yeah. Like, you, mm -hmm. you guys know what you want me to say. Like, yeah. this happens every time yeah. I come here. And then, like, he, like, almost, like, reverse psychology did it. And, yeah. Like, not insulted them, but, like, kind of, like, threw it in a different way. Like, hey, look, yeah, I made a mistake. Like, yeah. if I have to be here, I'll be here. Like, it's just, like, he almost was, like, at peace knowing, like, Right, I'm just gonna be here, mm -hmm. and then they let him go. I think that also goes back to the hope message of when yeah. even when you think hope is gone, when there is no hope left, there always will be some to give you through. The ending point of the movie is hope and optimism, and you leave on a positive note that even you know these people who you know Andy Dufresne didn't even do it. Yep, he didn't people, even do the crime. He didn't even do the crime, and you know even these everyone gets what they deserve in the end of the movie. You know from Andy, yeah. from Morgan Freeman to the warden to you know, everyone gets what they deserve at the end. That's true, yeah. I will tell you what I don't like about the movie. First thing I don't like is the makeup. Because all of a sudden, the only reason why you know 10 years has passed is because they'll mention that 10 years has passed. Right, there's no age difference there's in no anybody. Age. At their only point, there's like at like three quarters through the movie, they start putting makeup and receding the hairline a little bit. Yeah, a little gray. A little gray, but like, you know, they'll be talking like, man, it's been 15 years, and Tim Robbins looks exactly the same as he did when he started yeah, the movie. right, right. And then the other thing was, how did he grade those directions at the end? You know, you'll walk due north through yeah. this town to find this one rock that has no place being there. Yep. All that specific stuff. How did Tim Robbins have that idea, or Andy Dufresne have the idea for that before he even entered prison? Right. That takes a lot of planning, and that's the part that pissed me off. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't really make much sense. I mean, the guy's obviously a very brainy and, like, smart, but, like, that's next-level shit. That's like, next level. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? That is forethought. Drags out the rocks in his pants <laughs> when he's yeah, going through yeah. them. I don't yeah. know. But, yeah, it's wild. The only thing I didn't like about the movie, and it's not the movie's fault, is the other two movies that came out that year. Yeah, it was... Uh, Forrest Gump, Pulp Fiction. Yeah. That's why it did so bad in the box office. Yeah. But, again, not the movie's fault. But we'll, maybe we'll do another one of those movies on a future episode. Ooh. Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Oh. Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Because you haven't seen that. Well, you, are, you are going to hate you Pulp are, Fiction. You <laughs> Actually, you are going to have no idea what's going on in Pulp I still have no idea. I just watched it like want eight to see, times. I just want to see the gimp, his reaction to the Gimp scene. Oh, my God. Yeah, you might actually. I don't know. You might like that movie. <laughs> you might like it. I, think, I think that's part of the idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see if it's on streaming. If it's on streaming, we'll do that next. The thing that you didn't like was the time. Is there anything else you didn't like about the movie? It just was like, it was almost like it was the same thing every time. Cell, mm. yard, cafeteria, cell, yard, well, cafeteria. Is that kind of maybe, they're trying to, yeah. maybe they're trying to make you feel like you are in prison, prison part of, and like make you feel like how they're feeling. Right? Exactly. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just like, I like having multiple, lots of different yeah. scenes in Yeah, but if you're in a, a movie that takes place in prison, you know, it feels, to that point, it almost feels as a successful thing that it made you feel that, oh, well, we're back in the cell. Oh, we're back in the yard. Yeah. As, as Mike was saying, you know, that's what they want. You want to feel like you're stuck because they're stuck. You know, they, as you said, you, you know only these four walls. And so, yeah. you know, as a, as a viewer, you want to be in those four walls as the well. The thing that blows my mind, though, Mm -hmm. Okay, and I know shit happens. Some shady shit happens in prisons in real life. Him building that, right? Mm -hmm. How the fuck <laughs> did nobody see that he was doing this? Not necessarily because of the noise, but like the guards have to walk around at some point. Like mm -hmm. he could have been like halfway down that tunnel, and then all of a sudden he's not in the cell. 
Like, say he just walks by and he's like, he's not in the cell. Yeah. Maybe he hasn't theoretically escaped yet because he's halfway there trying to dig it up, but it's yeah. like, okay, he's not in there. Like, <laughs> what's going on? That's like, old, like I mean, that's a testament to a corrupt prison system that they're in right there. Like, the guards, like, might they, they might not even do their rounds or, like, some shit like that. Or, like, and then older systems, or older prisons, like, how often do you hear of a prison escape nowadays? Not yep. that often. El Chapo. And then, yeah, El Chapo. Well, he's back in prison. With his, yeah. you know. There could have been some bribery yeah. shit going and, on there, And, too. like, you know, like, prison breaks were, I'm not going to say they were more, like, more popular, but, like, they did happen more often back then. And less like, security. Yeah, less yeah. security. Like, obviously, less, inf- like, easier walls to break through. The guy was breaking with a little hammer. Like, right. who knows? He could break it through like no freaking prisons now. No, nah, no shot. No. no shot. I drive by a prison every day to work, and there's barbed wire, there's police officer right right across the street you're not getting out of that prison with a little, with a little yeah. spoon no shot sure. spoon i mean uh, the rock axe yeah i want to get your opinion nick now that you have seen the movie mm-hmm. is shawshank redemption a classic no not a classic no. quick answer. no shot no i could have told you within 15 minutes that movie wasn't a classic when i watched it i said it from the get-go and i'm telling you now viewers no fucking shot I almost fell asleep. Tell you the truth. Almost fell asleep. Fair enough. Almost fell asleep. Crazy. I, Mike, I'm sure you think it's a classic. Instant, easy. Yeah. Easy money classic. I'd say it's a classic too. But that's why we don't do the classic or not. That's why Big yep. Nick is the fifth. <laughs> yep. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, turn on that notification bell. And let us know what movies you want us to watch. And we're open to suggestions. Can't uh, do horror movies. I don't fucking yeah. do horror movies. Yeah, I, I don't do that. horror movies. That. Yeah, make sure I, I, I don't do horror. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll be back next week. That's a wrap.